Hello and welcome to this week's Wireless Land News Desk on March 16, 2018. My name is Tom Carpenter. I'm the CTO at CWNP. And this week in the news, we've got a couple of news items and some information for you about Wi-Fi Trek. So first of all, 802.11 TGMC. What is that? Well, 802.11 Task Group M is set aside for the maintenance of the 802.11 standard. And so there was a task group MA that resulted in 802.11-2007. There was a task group MB that resulted in 802.11-2012. And there was a task group MC that resulted in 802.11-2016. The reason I'm stating that is because I noticed in the news this last week, there was some information about some of the new features coming in Android P the new Android OS. For example, it's going to support what is called fine timing measurement or FTM, which is defined in the 802.11 2016 standard. But when reading it, I noticed they referred to it as the 802.11 MC feature. And immediately I stepped back and said, wait a minute, we're up to 802.11 B something, but not 802.11 M something just yet. So what are we dealing with here when they say that? And of course, immediately I went in my mind to the task group M, which is dealing with maintenance. And I was sure that was what they were talking about. And of course, that is when this FTM feature was introduced. If you look at the 802.11 2016 standard and you do a search for FTM, you'll see a large section that deals with how the fine timing measurement actually does work within the standard to give you RTT, round trip time so that you can understand variance in distance from another station, usually a, an AP to a station that is a client. And so the client can know how far it is from the AP, the AP how far the client is from it, and so forth. And this is based on the amount of time it takes for the signals to travel from the AP to the client. So this is for indoor location tracking. Now, interestingly, the Wi-Fi Alliance has something called Wi-Fi Certified Location, which is based on this very thing. Now, they get it right. They say that it's based on the fine timing measurement in 802.11.2016. They don't say 802.11mc, but I noticed a couple of articles talking about Android's new features supporting 802.11mc, which is not, of course, what it is at all. And if you take a look at 802.11.2012, and then compare it to 802.11.2016, you'll notice the FTM feature is there in 802.11.2016, but it was not there in 802.11.2012. If you further look at all amendments ratified between 802.11.2012 and 802.11.2016, you'll see there was no amendment that introduced it. So the question becomes, how did it get into that standard? And we usually talk about the fact that the standard is updated through amendments. Now, when we're talking about the standard being updated through amendments, we're talking about things like 802.11aa, 802.11ai, ac, ad, ah, af, etc. But that's not the only way things can get added or changed in the standard. The task group M has the mission and authority to correct problems within the standard while they're creating the rollup and they're maintaining it over the years until there is a rollup and they can introduce new things. And that's exactly how FTM got into the standard. It was introduced through task group MC or TGMC. Now, the interesting thing to that then is if you were just following amendments, you might not have noticed that it made its way into 802.11.2016. So there's several things we have to keep up with to really find out what's in the standard today. Now, one bit of humor that I ran into in relation to this whole thing, I was looking through the comments through the task group MC to see when they talked about this FTM feature. And I did find the comments and where they were talking about it. But one comment, and I posted it on Twitter today because I found it humorous, it went like this. Every time I get near NXJ in the frame source, a curious thing happens. My right index finger with a will of its own moves towards the delete key. I just can't help it. My therapist has tried everything and run out of ideas. Perhaps this group will find me an alternative therapy. <laughs> now that was interesting. That was funny. A cute little comment about NXJ isn't needed anymore, right? But what was even funnier was the response that came back 
from TGMC to that comment. The response was this, either delete Annex J or send the men in white coats round to minister to the commenter. <laughs> so yes, there's a sense of humor among the people that work in the IEEE. At least I find this very funny. Hopefully you do as well. Now that's not the only thing in the news. Of course, Android is implementing this Wi-Fi round trip time. You'll see if you look at the Wi-Fi Alliance website for the Wi-Fi certified location, they list several vendors that have implemented this capability. And so this is coming in the new Android OS as well. So eventually we should see devices supporting this, what we can call Wi-Fi round trip time or Wi-Fi certified location. And then we'll be able to take advantage of it for indoor location features and capabilities like uh, being able to give the person a notification on their phone of a sale for the store they're right next to, or helping them find the nearest X or Y that they're looking for in a mall because we know where they are so we can tell them where the nearest restroom is or any other item they might be interested in. So some interesting possibilities linking in to this RTT feature in 802.11.2016. Now, the next piece of news, there's a new Raspberry Pi. That's right. So if you like the Raspberry Pi device, the little small form factor computing device, there is a new one now. It's called Raspberry Pi 3 Model B+. And there are two things about this that really got my attention. Number one, it is a quad core 1.4 gigahertz processor, and that's pretty quick. So you can do a lot more, a lot faster with it. But in addition to that, the two things that got my attention were, first of all, it's an 802.11 AC chipset on board and support for Bluetooth 4.1. Now, the beauty of that is it's able to read and understand at least all of the management frames and so forth of 802.11 AC that might be communicating or traversing an environment. But here's the second thing. There's an add-on coming in the form of a hat, which is a module that connects to the Raspberry Pi without having to do any soldering. This hat is going to give you a PoE capability. So you'll be able to power the Raspberry Pi 3 with PoE. Now that's the Model B Plus, and the Model B Plus runs for about $35. The PoE device, some places that are listing it for pre-sale before it's available, are listing somewhere between the ranges of $30 and $80, depending on the site. So there's a pretty big range there. So if you figure $35 for the Raspberry Pi Model B Plus, and you figure, let's say $60 for the other, under $100, you have a small form factor piece of hardware that can be powered by PoE that's able to read 802.11 AC frames, maybe you get where I'm going with this. The potential for implementing it as some kind of a Wi-Fi sensor that you could deploy in your environment will be quite interesting. So I'm really curious to see what the Wi-Fi community comes up with with this new Raspberry Pi Model B+. I really can't wait to see what they do. I think there's going to be some interesting things there. So watch for that new device. And finally today, the Wi-Fi Trek registration site is up and the call for speakers is up. So the Wi-Fi registration site is at conferences.cwnp.com. You'll go there, you'll see all of the information about the venue, the conference dates, and all the details you'll need to know to sign up. And there's also a call for speakers there. So if you're interested and qualified in speaking at the Wi-Fi Trek conference this year, make sure you get out there and fill out that call for speakers form because we do have a panel, a speaker selection panel that is going to be looking at all of the submissions and helping us choose the best lineup for Wi-Fi Trek this year. So make sure you get that submitted if you haven't already. And I do look forward to seeing you at Wi-Fi Trek. Also, we're headed next weekend, but it'll start the following week to Las Vegas for the CWDP and CWAP JTAs. So look for news coming out of there during that week, week after next. And also watch for all of the announcements about product timeframes and so forth for the new CWDP and CWAP certifications. Well, that's all I have for the news today. Thank you very much for joining me. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe below and I'll see you next week.